Hello everyone, welcome to module 9. So in this module we're going to talk about electrochemistry, chemical change and electrical work. So let's start with the outline for the lecture. So in this module we're going to talk about redox reactions and electrochemical cells, voltaic cells and how to use spontaneous reactions to generate electrical energy, cell potential which represents the output of a voltaic cell, free energy and electric will work, electrochemical processes in batteries, and finally end with corrosion and electrolytic cells where we use electro electrical energy to drive non-spontaneous reactions. So let's start with the overview of redox reactions. So redox reactions combine two reactions. One is reduction and oxidation. Let's talk about each of these. Oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. So these processes generally occur simultaneously. So oxidation results in an increase in the oxidation number while reduction results in a decrease in the oxidation number. So simply said, oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. And if they both happen simultaneously, we call that a redox reaction. Now, the molecule that creates the environment for oxidation so the oxidizing agent takes electrons from the substance that is being oxidized so the oxidizing agent therefore is being reduced and the reducing agent gives electrons to the substance that is being reduced therefore the reducing agent is the one that is being oxidized <coughs> so let's take a simple example we have zinc plus 2 h plus gives zn2 plus plus h now zinc here is a solid substance which has an oxidation number of 0 and we have hydrogen which general has a oxidation number of plus 1 and Zn2 plus again the charge itself becomes the oxidation number and hydrogen is a gas so it's 0. Now notice here that zinc is gaining electrons, zinc is increasing in oxidation number while hydrogen has a decrease in the oxidation number. So here zinc loses electrons. By, gain, by increasing the oxidation number and hydrogen ion gains electrons by decreasing the oxidation number. Now, so one way of looking at oxidation is that one reactant generally loses electrons. So the one that gets reduced, uh, reducing agent is the one that is gained to oxidize and therefore oxidation number increases. So here the oxidation number is increasing from 0 to plus 2, so which we simply say as oxidation reduction so where the other reactant gains electrons and oxidizing agent is the one that is being reduced therefore it results in a decrease in the oxidation number so hydrogen ion is the one that is getting oxidized so this is the oxidizing agent that becomes reduced because uh, notice here that there is a decrease in the uh, h plus uh, for the hydrogen from plus one to zero so therefore resulting in a reduction reaction so one way of balancing redox reactions is called as the half reaction method for balancing the redox reaction. So we divide a redox reaction into its oxidation and reduction half reactions. So this reflects their physical separation in the electrochemical cells. So here the, the, this method specifically does not require assigning oxidation numbers and the half method reaction is easier to apply to reactions in acidic or basic solutions. So let's start with the steps in half reaction method. First step and the most obvious step is to divide the skeleton reaction into two half reactions, each of which contains the oxidation and reduced forms of one of the species, and balance the atoms and charges in each half reaction. So first we try to balance the atoms other than oxygen, oxygen and hydrogen, then we do oxygen, then finally we do hydrogen. So again charge is balanced by adding the electrons to the left side in the reduction half reaction and to the right side of the oxidation half reaction. Remember that we are adding electrons on the left side in the reduction reaction and the right side in the oxidation half reaction. So if necessary, we generally can multiply one or both half reactions by an integer so that the number of electrons gained must be equal to the number of electrons lost. Once you reach this balance of having electrons lost equal to gain, then we add the balanced half reactions and include the states of matter. So let's take an example of this reaction right here. So we have Cr2O7 in aqueous state plus 
i minus in aqueous state giving chromium 3 plus in aqueous state plus i2 iodine in solid state so first we have to determine which one is the one that is oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction so let's take a look at simple sense of let's splitting the reaction into two halves so we have cr2o7 becoming cr3 plus and i minus becoming i2 so let's split those into two half reactions you have cr2o7 becoming cr3 plus and i minus becoming i2 so we have split these reactions into two halves so now let's try and make sure that we can balance them so the first step is to balance atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen so the ones that are other than oxygen and hydrogen here there are two chromiums there is only one chromium so let's balance the chromium right here so you have cr2o7 becoming 2cr3 plus next on this side we have 2i minus becoming i2 notice that there are two iodines here so we'll have to so we have the balanced iodine so now we have balanced everything other than oxygen and hydrogen now let's balance oxygen to balance oxygen we have to add h2o remember that we did not write directly oxygen but we add h2o which is the water molecule now notice that there are seven oxygens here so which means that whatever the number of oxygens add that many water molecules to the other side so here we we have cr2o7 gives 2cr3 plus plus there are seven oxygens here so we can write 7h2o on this side there is no oxygen so we can directly write the equation 2i minus becomes i2 next the third step is to balance hydrogens so to balance hydrogens we add h plus molecules on the other side so how do you balance hydrogens here now notice here that we have 14 hydrogens so right uh, balance the hydrogens on the left side So how do you balance that? So we can write Cr2O7 plus 7H2O becomes 14H plus gives 2Cr3 plus plus 7H2O. So now we have balanced on the left side. On the right side we do not have any hydrogen so we can directly write 2I2 gives I2. 2I minus gives I2. Now we will have to balance the last one is to balance the electrons so let me write down the equations here so these are the two half reactions that we have now let's try and look at the electrons so the charge on the left side here is plus 14 And the charge on the right side here is 2 times 3 plus so that gives you plus 6 now remember here we are trying to look at a look at it as the oxidation half and the reduction half so and this side we have negative 2 and this side we have plus 0 so always remember that we are always balancing the side that's higher than that's larger so the one that's larger here is plus 14 and here you have plus 6 so the net difference here is 14 minus 6 which is going to be 8 electrons so now we'll have to balance 8 electrons on the left side so remember here we are adding electrons so which means that it becomes negative 8 so which gives you the reaction here to make sure that both sides are balanced so now we can write the equation as cr2o7 plus 14 h plus plus 
8 electrons gives 2 Cr3 plus plus 7 H2O. Now you can check again to the balance this side. So we have 14 minus 8. On this side we have plus 6. 14 minus 8 is 6. So you have plus 6 and plus 6 on both sides so which are balanced now. Now let's take a look at on the other side again which is the larger side here. The larger side is plus 0 here. So which means that here you have negative 2. So to make sure this also becomes the same so we are going to add 2 electrons to the right side here. So that becomes 2 I minus gives you I2 plus 2 electrons. Now notice here this is negative 2 on this side we have 2 electrons so it becomes negative 2. So both are balanced on both sides. Now let's take a look at the number of electrons in each reaction. Here we have 8 electrons while on the other side we have only 2 electrons. So to make sure that both of them are balanced so let's take the second reaction multiplied by 4. So when you multiply the second reaction by 4 so let's consider let's make it into an integer. So 4 times 2i minus gives i2 plus 2e minus. So that becomes 8i minus gives 4i2 plus 8 electrons. Now we have balanced the 8 electrons on both sides. Now let's try to combine the both equations. So you have Cr2O7 plus 14H plus plus 8 electrons gives you 2 Cr3 plus plus 7 H2O and on the left the other half of the reaction you have 8 I minus gives you 4 I2 plus 2 8 electrons. So when you add both sides notice that 8 electrons 8 electrons is common so we can cancel that out so you will be left with Cr2O7 plus 14 H plus Let's write it this way plus 8i minus plus 14h plus gives 2cr3 plus plus 4i2 plus 7h2. So this is balancing in an acidic solution. So if the reaction is in an acidic solution, this is how the balancing needs to be in. That's the reason why we have h plus left. So whenever you see H plus in the reaction, it represents that it's an acidic solution. So this is how to balance the reaction when you have an acidic solution. Now let's talk about redox reactions when you have basic solution. So an acidic solution generally contains H plus ions and H2O. So we use H plus ions to balance the hydrogen atoms. Now what do we do in a basic solution is basic solution contains OH minus ions and H2O. So to balance the hydrogen atoms, we proceed as if in the acidic solution then finally we add one OH minus ion to both sides of the equation. So for every OH minus ion and H plus ion that appears on the same side of the equation we form a H2O molecule. For example let's take the same reaction and let's consider that if it was in a basic solution. So what if it was in a basic solution how would you solve this? So we would take the same exact equation and take the number of H plus molecules on both sides. So we have 14 H plus here, we would add 14 OH minus on both sides. So that reaction would become Cr2O7 plus 8I minus plus 14 H plus plus 14 OH minus gives 2 Cr3 plus plus 4I2 plus 7H2O plus 14 OH minus. Now notice that 14 H plus and 14 OH minus, they combine to form 14 H2O. So we have 7H2O on this side. So when you cancel it out, so you'll be left with 7H2O here. So the final reaction will become Cr2O7 plus 8I minus plus 7H2O gives 2Cr3 plus plus 4I2 plus 14OH minus. So we are basically cancelling out the amount, the common amounts of H2O to result in this is uh, this is the equation, the balanced equation when you have a basic solution. So the process goes the same way but in place of uh, directly writing the equation in terms of the acidic solution, we replace it with the OH minus. So we equate the total number of H plus with total number of OH minus on both sides 
and cancel out the common number of h2 were left so thereby resulting in the final equation in a basic solution so let's take a simple example and let's see if you can solve this so you have mno4 minus plus c2o4 2 minus gives mno2 plus co3 2 minus so this is a basic solution so remember that the procedure follows the same we split it into two halves so mno4 minus gives mno2 and c2o4 2 minus gives co3 2 minus so use the same principles here split it into two halves first balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen here notice that there is no need to balance because there is only one manganese on both sides here you have two carbons there is only one carbon here so we're gonna have to balance it with two here so again balance the oxygens balance the hydrogens finally by balance the oxygens by adding h2o balance the hydrogens by adding h plus and finally balance the electrons and finally check to make sure that both sides have the same number of electrons if they if they do not have one make sure to write the common multiple value to make sure that you get a, a common number and multiply to the either side to find the equality of the number of electrons gained or lost and finally combine both the equations so use this one so pause the video right here and try to see if you can solve the problem with the same steps So this will be your final answer. So I will be pausing here for 5 seconds so that you have an idea of how to look for the answer. So to check your answer. Alright, let's move on. Next let's talk about electrochemical cells. So electrochemical cells, so we have a voltaic cell. So a voltaic cell uses spontaneous redox reactions which means the net free energy gives free energy is less than zero to generate electrical energy so we are using the uh, chemical energy of a cell to generate electrical energy here the system will do work on the surroundings so you have another type of cell called an electrolytic cell so an electrolytic cell is using electrical energy to drive a non-spontaneous reaction so think of electrolytic cell is the reverse of a voltaic cell a voltaic cell uses redox reaction to generate a chemical electrical energy uh, electrolytic cell uses electrical energy to drive a non-spontaneous reaction so therefore delta g is greater than zero here the surroundings does the work on the system so both of these cells cells are constructed by using two electrodes in an electrolytic solution so the anode is the electrode at which the oxidation will occur and the cathode is the electrode at which the reduction will occur so let's take the voltaic cell so here you have the oxidation half reaction happening at the anode and the reduction half reaction happening at the cathode so the electrolyte here becomes positively charged you have so you have electrolyte x plus and you have the anode here the anode is the one that is negatively charged therefore releases electrons and gives it to the surroundings and the electrons again go back into the reduction reaction which is also the cathode where the reduction will occur so the cathode here becomes the positively charged one in a voltaic cell anode is negative and cathode is positive in an electrolytic cell anode is positive a cathode is negative here the energy is being supplied from the electrolytic cell to the surroundings but in an electrolytic cell in a voltaic cell the energy is being supplied to the surroundings the in an electrolytic cell the energy comes from the surroundings so this is the overall reaction in terms of the uh, cell let's talk about spontaneous redox reactions so let's take a strip of zinc metal in a solution of copper ions that will react spontaneously so the copper cu2 plus become uh, adds two electrons to become cu copper and zinc releases the two electrons resulting in uh, oxidation reaction so one undergoes reduction reaction the other undergoes oxidation what is happening here is that the copper takes electrons from zinc resulting in the copper becoming uh, fully 
equipped by zinc losing the electron. So zinc gets oxidized and loses electrons to copper. So the, although the electrons are being transferred, electrical energy is not generated because the reacting substances are in the same container. For the reaction to generate electrical current, if they have to be in two separate containers, in two separate electrolytic solutions for this reaction to occur. So this is how the reaction will look like. What is happening here is that the copper ions are being replaced by, so the copper ions replace the zinc ions from the zinc rod. So you have the zinc rod that is submerged here. The copper ions that are present in the solution will start accepting two electrons from zinc and the zinc becomes ZN2 plus ions and resulting going into the water. So what you see black here, these are all the zinc ions and the deposits that you see here are the copper ions. So let's, stay and let's talk about the next one, the construction of a voltaic cell. So what do you have in a current voltaic cell and how does it look like? So there is each half reaction which has to take place in its own half cell. So the reactions are physically separate. This is an important part to remember that for a reaction to be a voltaic cell, for a cell to be having a potential, the reactions have to be physically separate. Now each half cell generally contains an electrode in an electrolytic solution. The half cells are connected by an external circuit and you have a salt bridge that can that completes the external circuit. So let's take a look at how the reaction generally occurs. So you start at the zinc which is the anode. So the zinc undergoes the oxidation half reaction by releasing the two electrons. Now these two electrons are released into the electrolytic liquid there where the two electrons here jump close to the salt bridge. Now the salt which is Na2SO4 results in splitting of, so when they occupy those two electrons they split into 2Na plus plus SO4 2 minus. Now those ions are then transferred to the other side where they release those two electrons into the electrolytic solution that contains copper. The copper that is in the solution reacts with the two electrons and then gets accumulated onto the copper solution, onto the copper cathode resulting in the overall cell reaction where zinc undergoes uh, oxidation reaction while copper undergoes a reduction reaction. So what is the operation of a voltaic cell? So oxidation occurs at the anode which is therefore the source of electrons. So the two electrons then the zinc anode decreases in mass and the zinc Zn2 plus in the electrolyte increases. So there is a reduction that occurs at the cathode where the electrons are used up. So the copper ends up adding two electrons. So over time the Cu2 plus in the half cell decreases and the mass of the copper cathode decreases. increases. So here the zinc rod undergoes a loss while the copper rod undergoes a gain. This here is the basic understanding of a voltaic cell. So when the reaction is complete, this is what both of them will look like. So the depleted zinc is going into the solution as Zn2+. This copper that is present as Cu2+, goes onto the rod to, to complete to form copper. So from zinc, it is becoming Zn2+, and from Cu2+, it is becoming copper. So to mention this in terms of the charges of the electrodes, so the anode here produces the electrons by oxidation of Z, zinc and the anode becomes the negative electrode in a voltaic cell. So electrons generally flow through the external wire from the anode to the cathode. This is important to remember. So you go from anode to cathode where they are used to form Cu2 plus ions. So the cathode here becomes the positive electrode in the voltaic cell. Remember here the electrons are going from the negatively charged anode to the positively charged cathode. So this is the idea behind the entire process of electrodes. Now let's talk about the salt bridge. So the salt bridge is the one that completes the electrical circuit and allows ions to flow through both the half cells. So as the zinc is oxidized at the anode, Zn2 plus ions are formed and enter the solution. Copper ions leave the solution to be reduced at the cathode. So the salt bridge here is maintaining electrical neutrality by allowing the excess Zn2 plus ions to enter from the anode and excess negative ions to enter from the cathode. So a salt bridge basically contains non-reacting cations and anions, often potassium and nitrate dissolved in a gel. So how are the electrons flowing? 
you have electrons going from zinc passing through going to the copper but in that process you have zinc becoming zn2 plus and then zn2 plus crossing on to the salt bridge and then crossing from the salt bridge entering cu2 plus and finally becoming copper to make sure that we entirely write this as a convention so by convention a voltaic shown well voltaic cell is shown with the anode on the left and the cathode on the right so next let's talk about active and inactive electrodes so an active electrode is the active component in its half cell and is a reactant or product in the overall reaction again the same thing says for inactive electrode so it provides a surface for the reaction and completes the circuit it does not participate actively in the overall reaction so inactive electro electrodes are necessary when none of the reaction components can be used as an electrode for example when you have a electrode that cannot be used in the form of a solid rod you will have to use inactive electrodes so most common ones are graphite and platinum so in this we have reaction happening between manganese and iodine both these compounds cannot be utilized cannot have any form of uh, the reaction happening them by themselves because they cannot exist as a uh, you exist as active electrodes so they will have to use in, in the forms of inactive electrodes by resulting in the formation by using carbon here now let's take a look at the notation for a voltaic cell so notation basically uses the oxidation half on the left side and the reduction half on the right side so you have z zinc which is solid becoming zn2 plus which is aqueous and you draw two lines to represent the salt bridge and then that enters cu2 plus which is aqueous going to copper which is salt so the convention here basically looks at the flow of electrons from where it starts to where it ends so the electrons go from zinc to zn2 plus from zn2 plus across the salt bridge to copper from copper on to the copper solid rod so the double line here shows the half cells are being physically separated the single line shows a phase boundary between the components of the half cell so sometimes there is also a chance that concentration of the dissolved components are given in the parenthesis more commonly stated as 1m or 2m or something like that so when you have an inert electrode we use it at the exact start and we mention it in such a way that when you have multiple components a comma is used to separate show components that are in the same phase but are in uh, are separate quantities so again finally we end with graph so next what are they asking here so they're asking you to draw a diagram show balanced reactions and write the notation for a voltaic cell that consists of one cell with chromium bar in a chromium nitrate solution and another half cell with silver bar in a silver nitrate solution and a kno3 salt bridge so measurement indicates that the chromium electron is negative relative to the silver electron so now if the chromium electrode is negative to the silver electrode so which means that the chromium becomes the anode and the silver becomes the cathode so let's take a look at a simple diagram here So we have the electrodes here. So this is the negative electrode and this is the positive electrode. So now these two are connected to a voltmeter which measures the current that is being passed through. So the electrons are going from the anode to the cathode. Now this is the salt bridge here. The salt bridge contains 
KNO3. So, which means the potassium is pointed towards the the negative charge and the nitrate is pointed towards the positive charge. Now we have solutions here. So these are the solutions. On this side we have chromium nitrate. CrNO3 taken thrice. So when dissolved, it results in the formation of Cr3 plus. And here we have AgNO3. So which means when dissolved, it creates Ag plus. Right here you have the chromium electrode, and here you have the silver electrode. So now let's take a look at the chromium bar. So they're asking us first to draw the diagram. Next second to show the balanced equation. So first we have chromium that is the rod becoming CR3 plus so chromium becoming CR3 plus and AG plus becoming AG so to chromium to become chromium 3 plus it has to lose three electrons so three electrons for AG plus to become AG it has to gain So for Ag plus to become Ag, it has to gain one electron, becomes Ag. So these are the balanced equations here. So this is the oxidation half reaction and this is the reduction half reaction. So to balance both, we will have to calculate the total number of electrons. So multiply the second stage with uh, 3, so that gives you chromium. becoming CR3 plus plus 3 electrons and AG plus plus an electron becoming AG. So multiply the second one with 3. So you have 3, 3. So combine both the equations with 3 electrons gone. So you will get CR plus 3 AG plus gives CR3 plus plus 3 AG. So this is the total overall balanced reaction for the entire reaction. Now let's take a look at in simple sense the notation. How would we write the notation here? We are starting from chromium becoming chromium 3 plus and then you have Ag becoming Ag plus becoming Ag. So we can simply write it this way. You have chromium that becomes chromium 3 plus that again becomes Ag plus then becomes Ag. So to specify this we can say if this is solid, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, again this is solid. So this is the notation for the voltaic cell. So this is the notation. So this is the oxidation half and this is the reduction half and this is the salt bridge KNO3. So this is the entire reaction here. Next let's talk about electric potential and the voltaic cell. So when the switch is closed and no reaction is occurring, each half cell generally is in its equilibrium state. Now let's say for example we have zinc and copper. So zinc and copper both of them have the same property where they can release two electrons but the relative Reduce, reduce the relative capacity or the relative strength of the reducing agents results in where the which has the higher electrical potential. So zinc is generally a stronger reducing agent than copper. So the position of the zinc equilibrium generally lies farther to the right. So when the reaction lies farther to the right, there is more chance that the zinc undergoes oxidation than copper. So therefore zinc will generally have a higher electrical potential than copper. So when the switch is closed, the electrons will flow from zinc to copper. Remember here that the one that undergoes oxidation is the one that releases the electrons. Therefore, the, the electrons are going to go from zinc to copper or equalize the difference in electrical potential. Now, the spontaneous reaction occurs as a result of different abilities of these metals to give up their electrons. 
So this is the important part to remember. So let's talk about cell potential. So what is a voltaic cell doing is basically converting the free energy of a spontaneous reaction into kinetic energy of the electrons. So the cell potential of a voltaic cell depends on the difference in the electrical potential between the two electrodes. So cell potential is also called as the voltage of the cell or the EMF. So for, for a spontaneous process, the voltage of the cell potential is generally greater than zero. So for uh, voltages of some of the common cells that we see, uh, a common alkaline flashlight battery has around 1.5 volts, a lead acid battery has around 2.1 volts, a calculator battery around 1.3, your laptops which generally have a lithium ion battery have a voltage of around 3.7, an electrical eel will have about 0.15 volts and a nerve of a giant squid has around 0.070 volts. So the standard cell potential is generally designated as E cell prime and is measured at specific temperature with no current flowing and all components in their standard states. So what is the standard electrical electro electrode potential? So the standard electrode potential which is the E of the half cell is the potential for a given half reaction when the all components are in their standard state. So by, com by convention all standard electric potentials refer to the half, re the half, re half reaction written as reduction. So the standard cell potential depends on the difference between the abilities of two electrodes. So therefore, E of the cell is written as the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. Always remember that the E of the cell is always written as the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. 